Minister of Municipal Affairs and Housing. Thanks, uh, Mr. Speaker. My dad was a Navy veteran. He was a brave man. His ship was torpedoed twice. He couldn't swim. Growing up, he used to say, son, you haven't paid your debt to the past until you've left the future indebted to yourself. I used to wonder what he meant by that, <coughs> but standing here today, I understand. In a few short days, we will gather together, <coughs> heads bowed, in somber and solemn remembrance to honour the sacrifices Canadian soldiers have made in the two great wars in Korea, in, Af in Afghanistan, and in numerous peacekeeping missions. <coughs> As the sound of the last post touches our ears and the familiar words of Colonel John McRae's memorial poem in Flanders Field once again touch our hearts, our thoughts will be filled with sorrow for those lost on foreign battlefields, be it on the land, in the air, <coughs> or at sea. <clears throat> the contributions Canadians have made in these historic conflicts solidified our reputation as a nation that doesn't look for fights but will not shirk from them. Those who answered the call to serve to find our Canada, known across the globe as a strong, peaceful, and multicultural country. Our Canada, a nation that stands up in defense of freedom. Our Canada, a free nation, a privilege earned by the soldier and then donated to us all. It is our duty to remember how they died and the sacrifices they made. But it is equally report important to remember, remember how they lived with duty, selflessness, and honor, and to reflect on those who came home, our glorious veterans. Let us pay tribute to how they went on living and the values they represent, values forged in the despair of war, <coughs> values learned on battlefields, values then brought home to build this great province and this great nation. <clears throat> How they lived. Last week, I attended the funeral of Corporal Nathan Cirillo in my beloved hometown of Hamilton. This young man's life was taken so callously because he represented the very ideals that define Canada. Strength, tolerance, peace. <coughs> Those of us in, in attendance, and indeed the entire nation, were given the unique privilege to hear about Corporal Sorello's life, to catch a glimpse of a proud single father who adored his little boy, Marcus, a man with an infectious smile and a huge heart, a soldier who found the greatest honour in representing his regiment the Ar Argyle and Sutherland Highlanders of Canada while guarding our country's most treasured memorial. <clears throat> Reflecting on how Nathan and all our veterans lived is truly the essence of Remembrance Day. To celebrate rich lives lost or forever changed in the defense of freedom and ideals we have come to cherish. There simply is no greater sacrifice. They believed in a cause worth fighting for. They believed in a greater good, and that their endeavors, rife with great peril, had a purpose for future generations. What a great lesson for us all, especially each and every one of us who has been granted the extraordinary privilege to serve in this place and to try as best we can to make a difference for future Ontario generations. To make lives better for future generations, we must overcome adversity and emulate the hard-won values our soldiers have forged for us to follow. 
We are indeed indebted to those who serve, Speaker, both living and dead. And it is our duty, as Lieutenant Colonel McRae reminds us, to you from falling hands we throw the torch, be it yours to hold high. On behalf of the Liberal Caucus, lest we forget not only how they died, but how they lived. For to live in the hearts of those we leave behind is not to die. So the question we should ask ourselves today is how will we live? Let us resolve to leave a future indebted to ourselves, for that surely would be the best way to remember those who showed us how to live. It is also the best legacy we could possibly leave to our children and our grandchildren. Thank you very much. Very beautiful. Very beautiful.